in on it. The White House Chief of Staff has chosen sides in the daily battle between Trump and the truth. And John Kelly has chosen Trump. You learn a lot by watching a person lie. You can see how comfortable or uncomfortable they are with lying. You can see how easy it is for them. Everyone can see that lying is part of Donald Trump's nature. Some people even wonder if Donald Trump actually believes what he says when he is lying. And if he does convince himself to believe his own lies, that is truly pathological lying. It's the most dangerous kind of lying. It means the liar has lost touch with reality. Now watch what John Kelly had to say when he was asked about the Democratic members of Congress who boycotted the State of the Union speech Tuesday night. It breaks my heart because, as I say, I don't think anyone should hate someone else or show them disrespect just because they disagree on anything. Well, he sure looked like he believed that when he was saying it, which makes it all the more deeply disturbing because John Kelly knows that one of the members of Congress who boycotted the speech Tuesday night was Frederica Wilson, who, and John Kelly knows that it has been more than 100 days since he personally got caught lying about her. And a congresswoman uh, stood up, and in the long tradition of empty barrels making the most noise, stood up there and all of that, and talked about how she was instrumental in getting the funding for that building, and how she took care of her constituents because she got the money, and she just called up President Obama, and on that phone call, he gave the money, the $20 million, to build the building. And she sat down, and we were stunned, stunned that she'd done it, even for someone that is that empty a barrel. We were stunned. And we were stunned. Stunned to discover that every word John Kelly said there about Congresswoman Wilson and President Obama was untrue. John Kelly never apologized to President Obama for shoehorning him into that lie about the Congresswoman. He never apologized to President Obama for inventing a story about a phone call that he said the president participated in. He never tried to clarify that there was no racist intent in his lies and refused to apologize to the black president and the black congresswoman, the only member of Congress he has publicly attacked and lied about. And John Kelly now pretends that it breaks his heart that on the 104th day after he lied about Congressman Frederica Wilson, that she decided not to attend the State of a Union address delivered by a president who has been caught by the Washington Post in literally thousands of documented lies in his first year as president. We know what John Kelly looks like when he's lying. We have known that since the day he so angrily talked about Congresswoman Wilson. He looks very comfortable. He looks very confident when he's lying. He looks very committed to those lies. And he can even sound very reasonable when he's lying about what he says breaks his heart, like Congressman Wilson boycotting the State of the Union address. In that same interview yesterday, John Kelly demonstrated an ignorance of White House history that is a perfect fit to the Trump presidency and a willingness to say anything to help the president crush the investigation of the president. Rod Rosenstein and, uh, and, and the FBI Director Ray don't want you to release the memo, will you guys? Uh, the the memo four pages uh, came over uh, day before yesterday. Right. Uh, the 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 unique thing about all of this, frankly, is in, in every other case that I can remember in my lifetime where a president uh, was uh, in some kind of trouble, the president, the White House, attempted to not release things. Uh, whether it was whether it was Iran Contra, um, uh, but certainly uh, uh, things like uh, you know, the, the Nixon years. This president has said from the beginning, and certainly since I've been the chief of staff for six months now, I want everything out. I want this thing, I want the American people, A, to know 
uh, the truth and B, that the investigators and whatnot have everything. It's it's really unique in that we've leaned so far forward to get this out. Now, as far as the memo goes, the memo came over. Uh, we've got our folks in the in the uh, in the, in the um, um, our national security lawyers in the White House that work for me, work for the president. Uh, they're slicing and dicing it, looking at it so that we know what uh, what it means and what it understands. Did you see it? I did. What do you think? Um, well, let the, it'll be released here pretty quick, I think, and every, the whole world can see it. John Kelly said there were White House lawyers looking at the memo, slicing and dicing it. And then in the next second, the next second, he said the memo is going to be released. And we know that the president said Tuesday night that the memo was going to be released long before he read it. And we know that the president had not read it on Tuesday night when he said it was going to be released. That was public information that he hadn't read it. And when the White House put out the word today that the president finally read the memo, it was actually treated as news. But there is no reason to believe that. Absolutely no reason to believe it. Donald Trump hates reading. He has refused to read memos more than one page. And this one is reportedly three and a half pages. And there is no one in the Trump White House with the credibility to convince most people that Donald Trump actually read the memo, least of all John Kelly, who destroyed his own credibility 104 days ago with an ugly pack of lies for which he cannot bring himself to apologize. John Kelly had the enormous courage it takes to face combat. That is a kind of rare courage that most of us never have. But it takes a different kind of courage to be the one decent person in an indecent 